In this video, we're going to talk about something different, and that is beer culture in Germany. So stick around if you're interested to know a little bit of fun facts and as well as um, beer facts, I guess. <laughs> hey, I'm Jen. And I'm Yvonne. And we're from SimpleGermany.com, where we help expats settle into life in Germany more smoothly. smoothly. <laughs> All right. So first, we have a disclaimer. Today. Yes. Actually, three points in our disclaimer. Number one is that obviously we don't promote excessive alcohol drinking or any brands. Unfortunately, none of these uh, brands have sponsored this video, so we're doing this really out of per personal preference. <laughs> Disclaimer number two is... Why are we doing this video? Well, beer is a massive part of German culture, and since we are all about uh, yeah, explaining German culture and bureaucratic things, today um, we focus on culture, beer culture. <laughs> exactly. And our last disclaimer is that this is our opinion. Yes. By no way we are like beer connoisseurs or like beer tasters. We're no beer geeks. This is really, we're just normal people in Germany who enjoy an occasional beer. And so we decided to share with you the fun things about beer. And also like what you need to know, because this might still be confusing as a foreigner. You know, they're very <laughs> different types. So the good thing is that we have more than enough time to experiment, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> so let's start with some uh, like theory, right? So we start off our video by talking about the purity law. Can you talk about that a little bit? The purity law, or in German das Reinheitsgebot, basically sets the rules for how beer has to be brewed in Germany to be considered beer. Um, in fact, uh, all the beers we're going to talk about today are purity law beers. And um, in Germany, craft beers are also very popular. However, you're not actually allowed to call the craft beer a beer. Hmm. Um, that's why they have names like pale ale and I don't know what, because they're not German beers. So today it's all about purity law beers. Um, uh, the more German, the better. Yeah, so just to give a little bit of history, right? Like the purity law was created in 1516, I believe so, a very, very long time ago uh, in the Bavaria region. The reason why this purity law was created is to prevent from a poisonous thing to enter this beverage uh, because apparently they would put random stuff in it and that would end up killing people. Like fungus and stuff. <laughs> like yeah. fungus and stuff, right? So the purity law says that you're only allowed to create beer with four ingredients. That's barley, hops, yeast, and water. So, as Ivan mentioned, all of the beers here, uh, they're all under the purity law. Well, right now we only see the glasses, but yes. Right, the ones that we're going to talk about, right? <laughs> so, that leads to the next question, like, what is the official drinking age in Germany? Ooh, that's a good one. So, um, the legal official drinking age in Germany is um, 18 for any alcohol beverage. Mm -hmm. However, um, if you lower the alcohol level, for example, in beer... And wine. Or wine, yeah. yes. Uh, you can officially drink it uh, with the age of 16. However, it gets However. even lower. <laughs> beer and wine can also be consumed legally at the age of 14 in the... Um, uh, how do you say that? Presence. In the presence, yes. In the presence of your legal guardian or parents. That is crazy. Do you remember when was the first beer? Like, how old were you when you drank your first beer? I don't remember my age, no. That is okay. I was young. Probably young, yeah? Yeah. My first beer in Guatemala, I mean, also in Guatemala, legal drinking age is 18. And my first beer was that when I was 18. Always following the rules, these Latinos. I'm kidding, we definitely don't, but <laughs> I need to scroll down here in my notes. Okay, so um, next one up. Okay, so let's talk a little bit where you can actually drink beer, which pretty much I would say in Germany, the answer is pretty simple. It's everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> no, but culturally, right? But culturally, Culturally, yeah. where do you drink beer in Germany other than in your home? Huh? Right. Um, so obviously the... the Number one answer is in the brewery uh, itself, or in the breweries, better said. Which in German is called the Brauhaus. Das Brauhaus oder, das Brauhaus oder die Brauerei. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah genau. Um, genau. So usually, you know, breweries have their own um, restaurants or, or, or hmm. beer gardens. That's actually number two, but we'll get to that. Um, where you have the beer and, and that's why we also have the glasses here, you only get beer served in a brewery in the appropriate glass for the beer. Hmm. As you can see, there are very different sizes and shapes. Um, that's the part of uh, the fun part that we're going to get into later. Um, and that is uh, very much connected to the beer. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say in the uh, in the beer houses, be prepared because I, I personally think that the <laughs> that the waiters there, they're trained to be like rude. They're first of all, they're super efficient, right? Like uh, you will never have an empty beer, at least. Yeah, you will never have most likely, right? Or you yeah, think that's a regional you're thing? You're jumping, you're jumping. That's Sorry, a regional that's thing. a regional thing. Yeah. But anyway, so the rudeness is a national thing. So wherever you go to a, to a brewery, like these guys are tough or girls, right? Like they, they, they're super rude and their answer is super short. They're running back and forth and always very efficient. 
Um, I think I heard once it's because they also make commission on the amount of beer that they give. So they are very tack, tack, tack. Could be. I don't know. Could be. Yeah. If you have uh, worked in a <laughs> brewery and you can explain why. Let um, us know. You're so serious and tack, tack, tack. Let us know in the comments below. That'd be a super interesting answer. Okay. Yeah. So uh, brewery. The second one is the beer, beer garden. Yeah. The, uh, like a... The beer gardens, like I just mentioned, um, mainly, of course, in summer, but there are also some winter beer gardens like that are covered or inside or indoors. Um, so that is not just a summer thing. Um, and in the beer garden, uh, kind of depends on the beer garden. It's also glasses, but a lot of bottles as well. Um, and then number three. Ah, and number three, uh, what do we have on our list? Number the three. Kiosk. Oh, yeah, it's the kiosk, the famous kiosk. And these kiosks are like small shops that are anywhere in any city, I would say. And you can actually buy cold beer from them. Usually it's a little bit more expensive than in the supermarket, but cheaper than a restaurant. Yeah. And the benefit it is that it's a cold beer. And why are the kiosks or spetis, as they're called in the mm -hmm. Berlin area, uh, so important is because you can get your famous Feierabend Bier, which is the beer that really celebrates the end of a work day. And yeah. super cool is that uh, usually you can get a beer with some friends, go to a park, enjoy the sunset. Here in Dusseldorf, for example, a lot of people sit by the Rhine and just drink a beer in the evening or two or three, depends, right? If it's a Friday. <laughs> And, and there are lines at the kiosk. Yes. Like you sometimes really have to stand in line to, to get that ice cold beer. Yes. And a little tip here, if there is a line, don't just grab the first one, but see if it's warm or cold because maybe mm. it has just been restocked and then take the one from the from the back because that's usually the coldest. That is true. Another advantage of the kiosk is that they are usually also open on Sundays. So, ah, you know. That is also a very yeah. fair point. Yeah. Those are the few actually shops that are open on Sunday yeah. in Germany. Important to get your cold beer. <laughs> Kidding. They also sell other stuff, right? But like ice in cream. our context. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, how many breweries are in Germany? Wow, um, I can't give you the exact amount because I think that varies per year, but it's definitely over 1,500 breweries that operate under the German Reinheitsgebot. Reinheitsgebot. So we also read... Reinhard's what? Rein... <laughs> Reinheitsgebot? <laughs> we also read that if you would drink a different beer that is under the purity law in Germany, Every day, you would be drinking beer for 15 years. That's how many types of beers and brands are in Germany. Even with just four ingredients, you know, there because there are, I don't know, 200 types of hops and 40 types of barley all the other way around. Mm. Yeah, so there's so, different yeah. types of different ingredients. Also, water has uh, apparently has also of course, an effect impact, on, yeah. the, on the taste and, and the type of beer. Yeah. But again, we're not we're not beer uh, professionals, right? So this okay. So I would like to classify beers in Germany in like two different buckets, kind of. I might be wrong. I might, be, but this is how I process the information. <laughs> One is that national beer and like regional beer, right? So national beer obviously is a beer that you can buy all across Germany. That is popular. You can go to any restaurant, order this type of beer, and you will get it served. Kind of like the standard or, yeah. The standard, yeah. yeah. And then you have the regional beer, which is the one that, as the name says, it is pretty much just regional. So some regional beers have become national beers, like we will talk, like we can talk about. Yes. It. Like the Weizen, for example. Or the Weissbier. Or the Weissbier, we'll also talk about that. And some have remained very regional that you can only get it in the city where they're brewed. Um, and we will talk about that here later as well. <laughs> So, I think okay. that's all about the, the theory, right? Yeah, so now I think it's time to practice, right? And for that, uh, we will open a few beers for you and show you... Um, we will unfortunately have to drink the beer afterwards, oh, so that's going to be so horrible. Such a pity. <laughs> so hold on as we go and get our ice-cold beer from the fridge. Here are the beers. Oh, oh. <laughs> Fail. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the most popular beer in Germany, which is... Ah, which is the uh, Pilz. Yeah, so the Pils is actually the most popular, I would say, national beer yes, of Germany. Yes, Pils is by far the uh, most popular, the most drank, uh, available anywhere. Um, I don't know of the most brands, but tons of brands. Um, and uh, yes, by and far. The, and the most popular brand, according to a statistics that we saw from... Yes, according to Statistica, um, is Kronbacher. Which we have here. Right here, exactly. Yeah. And um, as for the Pils, um, each brand, so in this case Kronbacher, um, usually has their own type of glass. So there is not one glass that, that, that qualifies for a pilz, but it's more like branded, hmm. right? Whereas when we go down the line here, you will learn that all the other beers have a glass per beer, not per brand. 
So that's ah, like the that's biggest interesting. difference. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So the pills is going to be the first beer that we are going to taste. <laughs> okay. um, and uh, yeah, like I said, this is the biggest brand. There are also tons of regional brands for pills. Um, hmm. So just because we qualified as a national beer doesn't mean it doesn't have regional brands, but the beer type, the pills is anywhere and everywhere. Yeah. And it's probably the best comparison for international beers is Lager. Yeah, that's this would the, be the name German Lager. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So how are you going to open that, Yvonne? Yeah, that is a very good question. So um, <laughs> in previous videos, I think it's called yeah. the weird th 10 weird things Germans do, which yeah. you can see up here. Uh, we talked about uh, the weird thing that Germans uh, open a beer with anything and everything but a regular beer bottle opener. <laughs> exactly. And we had a, a good friend of ours demonstrate because I said I'm not German enough to be able to do it. <laughs> that got me a few comments. <laughs> and uh, one of the comments said, don't worry about it. Um, you know, you don't, you don't have to be able to do it. It's nothing to do with German. It's because you're a woman. <laughs> okay. However, that person <laughs> saved himself by commenting, you don't need to be able to do it because women are usually more organized than men. Oof, okay. Oof, okay. And you usually carry around beer bottle openers with you. Very good safe because that is actually very true. If I grab my key here, that is uh, my key. And as you can see, it's not just a beer bottle opener. It's actually like a multi-tool. And guess what? This is from the TÜV Rheinland. <laughs> so that means it's TÜV approved as well. It's not TÜV approved. It's done by the TÜV. Oh, but it has to be TÜV approved. So it's, it's, it's not just them. a beer opener. It's like a screwdriver. It's like everything. Yeah. Okay, just uh, to that. That's However, to that comment, I said challenge accepted. So today, oh. I will um, demonstrate. try demonstrate that I am actually capable of doing this. Oh, let's hope it doesn't <laughs> fail. So let's so let's try. Let's try and do this. Okay. Okay. Go for it. I believe in you. You can do this. Oh. Hey! I feel like now you deserve your German passport. I deserve my German passport. Yes. <laughs> so this is just any random beer that we have here in our cupboard. You mean it's glass? Uh, uh, glass. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I haven't even drank one sip. Um, like I said, for pills, the glass doesn't really matter, and mostly we would drink it from, from the, the bottle. bottle. Yeah. But for agree. today's demonstration, we. Um, you know, the German beer pouring, also very important. We pour it in the glass. That's very true. Zack, as Germans would say. And Zack. that's how it would look like. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So this would be the pills, the lager, nothing special about it. Give it a try. Okay, cheers. Oh, it's cold snipe. I want mm. some too. Which leads me to Germans, obviously, love to drink the beer cold like who doesn't yes. right but i remember i wasn't i think like every story in in in, in this channel is like i was in a party <laughs> but really i was in a party party means also like at other people's houses right yeah, not like just in party a in a club or anything yeah, yeah that's okay that's a fair point yeah, yeah that, that's what i mean okay i was in a house party it was actually for the shoot shoots shoots fest mm -hmm. um and uh, this friend of ours uh, she would go walk around in her garden like actually feeling the glasses of everyone and whoever had like a warm no it wasn't glass the, the bottles and whoever had like a warm bottle she would take the beer bottle away and give you a fresh cold one even if you hadn't like finished your bottle that for me was like wow this is amazing warm beer is a no-go yeah so that's an no. interesting thing yeah. so we move to the second we move to the second one and uh jen just gave a brief introduction earlier so the second one is we would still qualify it as a national beer mm -hmm. although it of course has deep deep roots uh, in bavaria and uh, started as a regional beer um, why do we say national beer? Because a Weissbier, yeah? uh, or Weizen, yeah, the Weissbier is the Bavarian name and the original name. Um, started to become so popular all over Germany that it, yeah, you can still get it most, mostly even in restaurants uh, all over Germany. Yeah. Um, however, outside of Bavaria, we would call it Weizen or oh. Hefeweizen. Which is super Don't say that in Bavaria, though. <laughs> Which the story to that, I was in a restaurant with some friends and an Italian friend actually uh, asked, like I told you, we were in a brewery. I, I think we were in a brewery and these super friendly uh, uh, waiters. Uh, my friend asked for a Weizen and the guy's face was just like, I don't understand what you want. And Weizen? Nein, Weissbier meinst du oder was? And then it's like, yeah, okay, Weissbier. And they like, is it the same? I'm like, I don't know, we'll find out. And it turns out it was the same, but wrong name. <laughs> Um, so Eringer is a very popular brand. I don't know if it's the most popular brand um, of Weissbier because uh, if I'm being honest, this is actually the only beer out of all of these that I don't really like. Yeah, I also don't drink it that much, to it's, be honest. Um, it's, it's, 
it's a different, it's brewed differently. We're not going to go into details because we're not beer connoisseurs. Oh. Uh, but it's brewed differently. It obviously has a different glass because um, also I'm going to pour differently. It's just a different type. It's very heavy for my taste and very mm. sweet for my taste. Um, but a lot of people in Germany love it. True. And foreigners as well, of course. Yeah. So here's the second try. Let's see, does it work? I, I actually, I'm not going to try because I cannot. Hey! <laughs> oh, <laughs> this, is, this is good. This wow. is good. I'm very impressed. So I have a friend who would only actually drink this kind of beer. Um, so this is the probably the most important beer to pour correctly. And this is how you can actually tell whether the person has some basic German beer knowledge or not. Um, yeah, let's just do it. You have to really tilt. have the angle right. You have to tilt it be slowly and and generally speaking right because the this glass contains half a liter is this half a liter yes half a liter of this vice now I, i'm confused with the name vice beer uh -huh. right so that bottle should fit in that glass no problem and of course yeah there you go so now you have to give it a little rest as you see the foam is forming mm -hmm. and the little last schluck that you have here the little the rest you have to to um twirl it twirl it a little bit because in this beer, the um, whatever barley or hops is uh, in the bottom. What and is the name in German? Um, the Hefe? Yeah, or the Hopfen. I'm not even sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you need to like, you know, get it back into the beer and then pour it. Ah, oh, beautiful. Yeah. Couldn't have done it better. Very and as good. you can see here. Show the glass, maybe you can lift it. It's quite milky. And you see how it already starts, um, yeah, like, I don't even know, the, 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 the bubbly? little bubbly bubbles going up. So you can try this one. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm here just trying beer, which is awesome. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Let actually me actually bad. try this. So I, I have to it. confess that one, in my, in my multiple confusions mm. in being in Germany, mm. Um, so Yvonne uh, likes to compete in triathlons and, and sports. She likes to do a lot of sports. And in this one triathlon, I remember in the finisher area, she came with a bottle like similar to this of beer. A bottle, not a glass though, yeah. And I'm like, dude, you just like burned so many calories. Why are you like getting wasted now? Isn't that like so counterproductive? Like, why are you drinking beer? And she's like, no, Jen, it is an alcohol-free beer. And this uh, Weizbier, or Weiz, how do you even say it anymore? Weizbier. This Weizbier is like super good uh, to recover after sports. Yes, because it's an isotonic beverage that... Um, alcohol-free version, right? Alcohol-free, of course, yeah. <laughs> uh, the alcohol-free version is very isotonic um, and it rehydrates the body. It's um, very, very popular amongst athletes athletes <laughs> and show us the aquafree bottle ah see true yeah. we have it here off camera because you know so this would be the aquafree version it usually says alcohol -frei, yeah? yeah and um this is for example my my brother-in-law he drinks this after every single run and every time that i see him pouring this into a glass i'm like dude why are you gonna drink a beer and it takes me a second i'm like i oh, know it's alcohol free it's a tonic got it check got good it. <laughs> and this actually this whole aqua free isotonic is not only with the uh, with the vice beer but also with uh, tons of pills um, can I? And then before we jump into the next section, we need to talk about what I think it's, I, I personally don't understand. So there's a purity okay, law, I think right? I, need, I think I need some beer for this. <laughs> there is purity law that protects from weird things coming into the beer. However, for some reason, I don't know why, Germans decide to mix beer with different kinds of things. So we have what is called but a... Give me the other one first, please. Sir. Okay, so we have what is called a... <sighs> Weizen with, uh, myth <laughs> with uh, grapefruit juice, which is alcohol free. So back to the previous story, the one that I was drinking after triathlon is actually like this type. I wasn't drinking the Weiss beer, as you know, I just said, I don't like it. I was drinking this type, which is um, a, in German, beer mix getränk, like a, a mixed beer. Um, and in this case with grapefruit taste, uh, also alcohol free and also highly isotonic. But it doesn't just stop there. Look, then they have what is called a radla. This one has alcohol, but it's mixed with lemon juice. But what did you learn? What did I learn? That it was an accident? No. Your fa one of your favorite songs? Ah, that radla is kind of alcohol, <laughs> says a very popular song in Germany. <laughs> so, now we're jumping. But Jen is so upset that in Germany we mix beer with, um, with sodas. Let's just put it that way. So radla is a beer mixed with lemonade. Um, yeah, that's basically it. And uh, it, I think as far as I know, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, 
uh, happened to uh, be an accident because uh, the, the restaurant or the brewer ran out of beer and he still had uh, guests coming and they were usually cycling to the, it was like on a cycling route and he just started mixing it with like Fanta or lemon juice uh, or lemonade, whatever it was. And uh, the people liked it and that's how Radler means in Germany actually cycler. Uh, that's how it was born. Hmm. Interesting story. If I, I mean, if I read that correctly, yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a bit hypocritical because I, I judged the mixture of beers. However, I really enjoyed this uh, grapefruit and radla every once in a while. Um, but I prefer the radla without alcohol. I was going to say, there are also free versions of this. And those usually say... Free versions? Free, alcohol-free ah, versions. Okay. And those usually say 0. 0.0. Um, and why do they exist? Wait, first let me continue with my rant. Because oh my the last God. one that I have, which I don't understand at all, is this thing called a mixery. And this is beer with like Coke. Yes. Why? So Mixery is the brand. Can Usually, you please open this? Because I've never drank this. Yeah, and then we hold can on, try hold it. on. So Mixery is the brand. Um, what Jen is referring to is beer mixed with Coke. And yes, it's very popular in, in Germany. However, I would say the more modern beer mixes have taken over the... The, the, um, the Coke one? The likelihood or the... the, the popularity. Popularity, thank you, <laughs> of, of Coke. However, when I grew up, when I was a teenager, um, we would mix... Uh, regular beer like lager or Kölsch, which we're going to talk about later, um, with Coke. And why would we do that? If you are driving, you would reduce the amount of alcohol. But isn't it the same just to drink one <laughs> beer followed by a Coke? You're still drinking the same amount but of... But the Coke is too sweet by itself. Well, then just or, drink water. Or, and here comes the next thing, and yes, it's a little bit sexist, I'm sorry, but some girls didn't like beer and they just put Coke in it to make it sweeter, so they liked it. Well, then drink wine. I'm sorry. <laughs> What if there was no wine because it was a Schützenfest? Yeah, okay. I, I see the arguments. I see maybe the reason for it. I just still don't understand Are you sure you want to try this today? Yeah, I want to try it because I've never tried it really because I've been so hey. oh, You're like a professional now. Wait, I have a glass for that. So this yeah. one really, there's no glass. No. You're not going to pour this one for me? No, that's nothing special. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's dark as we can see. I'm not even well, going to pour the Well, the Coke is dark, no? Yeah, that makes sense. I don't even know if I want to try this. Do you want to try this first? No, you go ahead. Okay, <laughs> cheers. So, actually, it just tastes like Coke. No, like lighter Coke, not so like sweet. Like lighter Coke. It's yummy. It really would, is yummy. Yeah, I wouldn't, I would, like, I wouldn't drink that at a party. Maybe in emergencies, but, you know, let's just put this aside for now. So, All right. let's continue. Let's After continue. Our rant of alcohol But it's also important for you to know, <laughs> like, these beer mixes, because they're very, very popular in yes, Germany. And uh, especially in the kiosks, they are also, if, like, if, you know, friend says, ah, oh, get me a Radler or get me a grapefruit Mixer, mix or a backscreen lemon, also quite famous. Yeah. You gotta kind of got to know what that is, right? Yeah, true. Fair point. Yeah. So, we finish now here with our kind of national... Kind of national. General. Yeah, exactly. And now we jump a little bit into regional and we do that in levels, right? Let's start with one of the most popular, also regional one. Popular because this one here is called the Helles. Yes. Right? And actually, this is a beer that they pour in the famous Oktoberfest. Yes. And can you open well, this with the, your super the, professional the, the type manner? of beer. Again, this is a brand. Yes, the type um, of beer, yes. But the type of beer, Helles, is the Oktoberfest beer. And to be honest, while I'm opening this here, this is basically similar or similar, as Cem would say, since in German, you know, the air quotes are, air like, quotes this, are yeah. like this. Uh, in writing, not in air. Um, it's a Pilz, but Bavarian style. Oh, okay. Why? You are on fire. You are so good today. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Last time I just didn't dare. <laughs> so and uh, this is the October this. glass beer. Mm, October a glass. Oh, uh, God, my. <laughs> wow. I have not drank more than you have seen me here. So this is the Oktoberfest um, beer glass. However, this is 0.5. And in mm -hmm. the Oktoberfest, it's one liter. And that is called a, a mass. A mass. Yeah. A mass. A mass. Oh of... my God, Bavarian people, please correct me. <laughs> mass. Mass. Which means like, if you, so think about it. Can you pour it as we keep yes. on talking? Thank you. <laughs> so if you, if you have a liter of beer, right? And it's cold beer when it's delivered to you. Like how fast do you have to drink it to actually, for that beer to remain cold? Like I couldn't do it. I did it. Out of necessity, obviously. I was just going to say, but remember how when we were there that you would rarely actually finish the leader and then get a new one, but yeah. you would already get a new one and then just report like to keep the one that is old and warm yeah. to mix it with the cold one. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. this is the famous Helles, which looks hell. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Hey, I'll have my pills. <laughs> hey, hey. Oh, cheers. <laughs> cool. So this again is very Bavarian. Um, however, for example, here in Dusseldorf, we can buy it. 
Yes. We can buy it also, obviously, in Bavaria. Um, I wonder if you can buy it, I'm pretty sure, in any Trinkut. Uh, you, you can buy it here. However, Trinkal. the only reason why we did buy it lately, actually not just for this video, but also just for us to enjoy it, is um, because we visited my sister, enjoyed it, and she lives in Bavaria. Yeah. So this is, I would say, uh, you can get it outside of Bavaria, but it is not the typical beer you would get. Yeah, I you, agree. you would buy. And um, there was one more thing that I wanted to say. What did I want to say? I don't know. Um, huh. Forgot. You forgot? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So <laughs> let's continue with the regional. Ah, I wanted to say, yes. So the, because you are emphasizing the sizes of the beer so much. Ah, yes, true. So yes. the one liter beer in the Oktoberfest is mainly just at the Oktoberfest. Yeah, you don't typically buy a one liter beer, but no. you buy a half a liter beer. Yes, I was going to say. So then the most common beer bottles to buy is the half a liter one, the 0.5. Mm -hmm. And the um, 0.33 milliliters, mm -hmm. um, 0.33 liters or yeah, whatever, you get it. <laughs> um, so these are like the, the two types of, of bottles that you usually buy. And more often enough, you also get the pills in 0.5. We just prefer the three because then you can have um, more cold beer. Yeah. Yeah. Which now leads to the regional fun stuff. So we unfortunately will not start with the best beer in the region. That is not true. Uh, we will start with the second best beer. That is not true. Which is uh, the famous Kölsch. Which is the best beer. <laughs> so so <laughs> if, you, if you really see this rivalry, okay, so if you're not from this region, from the Rhineland, right, it's probably new to you that what are they fighting about? So you can maybe, I don't know, but back in the day, historically speaking, Dusseldorf and Cologne just like don't get along. Which I think it's not really, I think it's, nowadays it's like... May I? Okay, yes, go ahead. Okay, so <laughs> I'm originally from Bonn. Even from Bonn, you know, you've heard that in other <laughs> videos, haha. <laughs> uh, and Bonn is south of Cologne. So Bonn is very, has close ties with Cologne. So I grew up drinking the best beer, Kölsch. The second best beer. The, okay, the <laughs> best beer, Kölsch. So that is like my go-to, let's just get it here, my go-to beer, yeah? <laughs> Um, and this is your favorite brand too, right? And this is my favorite brand too, yes. No brand sponsorship, no promoting anything, but this is my favorite beer, yes. Um, the beer that my family, I grew up with, right? I mean, you grew up, sure. you like what you grew up with. Yeah. Most often. Not. And there is this rivalry, like you said, between Düsseldorf and Cologne. Mm -hmm. uh, and that goes back in history because of like a um, Schlacht, oh my God, like a, like a fight in the pre-war back in the day in the town between the two towns, Woringen. Okay. Okay. So the rivalry is based on that date. I don't want to go into it, but that's like it's a long, Way long history. Back. Okay. And ever since then, there's been a huge rivalry between the two cities in carnival, uh, in other sports. aspects, sports, in other aspects. Bands. Um, I mean, like music bands, right? Yeah. So tons of rivalry, uh, language, anything, <laughs> um, but also especially in beer. Yeah. So this is why this video is also the culture part because we already walked you through some culture here, but now comes the deep dive culture of a region. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know, because we live here, we don't live in other parts, that similar rivalries must exist in other areas of Germany. And if you are part of such a rivalry, please let us know in the comments because we also want to learn from you. Yeah. And um, so the Kölsch is um, by far the biggest beer in the region. Uh, you can only get it in Cologne and the area around it, like Bonn area. and the Eifel and mm -hmm. I don't know what. However, um, not really outside of this area. Maybe in specialty brewery, like 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 beer brew shops or whatever, but yeah. not not in restaurants or anything. So if I would go like to Berlin in a restaurant, I couldn't order a Kölsch, no. generally speaking. Right? No. It would have to be like a kind of very special restaurant to have that. I agree. Which going to that, as you open this beer, please, with your newfound method as a German. Um, we were in San Francisco once and we went to this bar. Oh, oh fail. fail. <laughs> okay, I think they, I kind of broke this already. <laughs> and, oh. um, it's okay, we have a backup plan. No, third is the charm. Hey! <laughs> My face probably was so... You can pour it as well, thank you. Um, so... Okay, so anyway, so as we were in San Francisco and they said they had like Kölsch brewed beer and we, we, we bought one, actually two, one for each, to try and see. Okay, we were disappointed obviously because it wasn't a real Kölsch. So it was super interesting that this type of beer was like a brew type in this craft beer um, brew like place that we were at. Yeah, and not just in San Francisco. I've uh, previously been in Japan, and there we actually were in a brewery that was selling Kölsch and Alt, the beer from Düsseldorf, which we get the into later. The best beer. 
second best. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they use the names because they're famous, but uh, they don't taste like anything mm. in Germany. And uh, funny enough, every German beer that has the is brewed by the Reinheitsgebot has it written somewhere on the bottle. Either ah, somewhere true. on the label it says true. Uh, nach deutschem Reinheitsgebot. Yeah, that's true. So talk about the glass because this is exactly. So this is actually also why it's the best beer. Do you see this sexy slim little glass? It's very thin. It's very light, and uh, it just keeps the beer yummy because it's small. It's smaller than the bottle. Uh, so the smallest beer in Kölsch or Kölsch is usually 0.33, and the glass is usually 0.2. Hmm. Um, and why is that? Because like we discussed earlier in the brewery, you only get um, the, beer, the from beer from the, from, keg, from from the, the glass, barrel. exactly yeah. from the barrel. And this you empty in two sips, two or three sips. So the beer never gets warm. And that's the whole point, right? That you enjoy a cold beer. Yeah. Which Alk also is the same. Don't worry, we'll get to that too. But please continue with yeah, but your... But it's sexy and slim. Kush, uh, so I'll, I'll pour it, you know. So what's super interesting is that in Cologne, when you go to a brewery and you order this type of beer, the very friendly, not uh, gentleman will bring <sighs> it in... Look at this. Um, look at this. <laughs> Ah. We'll bring it in. How do you even call that? It's like a little case that he carries the beer in. We will put a picture here that it's like a round case where all these beers are stacked. And they always bring you a fresh one. So it doesn't matter if you have half a beer or a little bit of beer. The waiter will always realize and give you a new round. Unless you put the beer deckel, the, the coaster, coaster, on top of the beer um, to tell the waiter, I don't want any more beer, thank you, stop serving me. So that I find super cool. So you don't have to order. But it's it, the same for... It, it's Alex. flowing. Yes. So now can we talk to the best beer? Second best? The best one. Okay, so now we have Alt, which actually this is my, I would say, yeah, one of my favorite um, Alt brands, uh, Füchsin, just because they're so funny in their uh, ads and everything. They're and very good very marketing, good. yeah. And this one is super awesome because look, I don't even need to use a lighter. Oh! oh. <laughs> it popped. <laughs> so like uh, the Kush. So we got, the, we got the big bottle because that has the popping one. The yeah. small bottle, the 0.33, would also have the, you know, people we wanted to give you a bit of variety. Yes, exactly. So this one, um, just like the Kirsch, this also has a very, very efficient glass. Short and not so sexy. <laughs> Short and I would still say very efficient because it also keeps the beer cold. And just like Kirsch, uh, once you, you, you have this much, the... the the waiter will come and... Now look um, at the color. Here comes the big difference from all of the beers that we have uh, shown you so far. Oh, this is so nice. You did a good job there. Oh, and this is how you get the beer at the brewery. And it reminds me of the good old days when we could go to a brewery and actually get some beer. And this is where you see the difference between uh, Alt and Kirsch. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. So nice. So needless to say, this one has a darker color which means is a heavier beer in itself. And if you come from Cologne, obviously you're gonna like fuss about the beer because it's not the best beer, whatever. But uh, we're very open-minded in Dusseldorf. And actually, funny enough, you can buy, there's multiple places in Dusseldorf that you can buy Kirsch. But in Cologne, there are, I would say we found one in all of our years that actually sells Alt. That That's is how open-minded and cool that we are true. in Dusseldorf. However, the Alt is um, a very special taste. You need to really get used to it. It took me, when I moved here, some time. Sometime. And to go back to the rivalry, um, when, when anyone from Cologne, or even from me from Bonn, I'm not even from Cologne, you know, but <laughs> even from Bonn, when I moved to Düsseldorf, you know, friends were like, ah, you're moving abroad. <laughs> because Düsseldorf is like Düsseldorf. Ausland, you know. Um, so yes, uh, this is the rivalry in, rivalry in the beers. Uh, you can see the color, you can see the shapes. Um, remember them if you ever come to this region. Oh, and plus, uh, let me add to that a story from the brewery and how they get served. Remember I told you this one gets served in like a little case. Uh, this one, actually, the waiters just have them on, uh, how do you call this? A tablet? A tablet, oh my God. It's probably a serving, one of those. A serving, a serving <laughs> tray. A tray, a tray. A tray. A, a normal like serving tray, yeah. And there he has also like all like tons of beer uh, and the same procedure. You get served the new beer as long as uh, you have a little beer, unless you put the beer decal or the coaster on top. Yeah. Did you say that they mark the not mark ah, beer? Also, on both cases, which I don't think, I haven't really experienced that in other no, places. No, me either. On the beer coaster, because it's made out of paper, usually these waiters, they come, they always have a pencil. Yes. And they, whenever you order a beer on the uh, decal, why do I was on the coaster, they mark a, a stripe. They just do stripe. stripe, yeah. And whenever you have to pay, you provide this... Um, 
coaster to them. The decker. I always want to say decker. The coaster to the waiter, and then he counts how many uh, uh, sure. lines you have, and that's how much you have to pay. Yeah. And um, that's why it's also so fast, right? Because they don't have to cash in between or whatever. They just drop another beer, put a line, go to the next table. Yeah. And if you order food, they also usually write the price of the food on a coaster. So basically, the coaster becomes your receipt. Yeah, pretty much. Very yeah. efficient. Yeah. yeah. Very, Very efficient. brewery style. So yeah. now, actually, I would say we both agree that this is one of our both favorite beers. Yes. So this, uh, when was it founded? A couple of years ago. So here we go now into, we, we leave the tradition of German beer. Yeah, like the like the very traditional ones. Exactly, yeah. the very traditional ones, like with super big and like inheritance and pride and, and like... History, mm. yeah. yeah. And we trade new waters of modern beer that mm. is still by the Rheinheitsgebot, but modern German beer, which again, we are fans of. Uh, first of all, it's yummy. And second of all, again, they have great marketing and they're just a cool team. Um, sure. And uh, go ahead. Yeah, so this is what is called Költ. So Költ is actually a mixture of, if you haven't guessed already, Kölsch Whoa. and Alt. <laughs> so everything that they do is really just to bring these two regions together in the sense of brewing, right? Like even here, I don't know if you see here, but even the, um, the logo behind it is a map and the Költ is in the middle of between Dusseldorf and Cologne. The actually beer is uh, brewed in the middle specifically, yes. which is, what's the name of the city again? Monheim. Monheim, Monheim yes. am Rhein. Yeah. And Ivan's favorite feature, which I'm going to let you explain it. Yeah. So uh, like the black line here is the Rhine, yeah, because both cities are by the Rhine, the biggest river in Germany, by the way. Um, and this is, of course, also the logo, which basically it's, it's so beautiful. I just love it. I mean, we need to like kind of yeah, like... Yeah, or I can take it and put yeah, it here. Yeah, show it to you. Because it's like the 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 uh, hops the hops thank you like the 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 outlay of a hops that ends in the cathedral of cologne Kölner is, Dom, like yeah. the iconic uh, iconic symbol of cologne yeah and in the middle you have the rhine tower of Düsseldorf, the iconic uh, symbol of Düsseldorf, and they just you know all comes together and it's one happy family. Um, this was out of create out of a joke and out of the sincere um, try to reunite the Rhineland, the, the Rhine unit, to like overcome this rivalry and just be all happy to live in the same region and be awesome together. So that is basically like their um, mission, I yeah. would say. And I think they're doing a pretty good job. And um, yeah, it also tastes good. You want to show the color? Yes. Open so, it with your, can you open it still with yes, your awesome Yes, I can method? still open it. And if we just have a look at the glass, obviously they also combine the thin on the bottom, a bit bulkier on the top, um, to really incorporate both styles of beers and so, both cities. So, unfortunately, because this is a very, very new ah. beer, wow, good job. Um, they don't really have a brewery in Dusseldorf or Cologne yet. Hopefully in the next year, something will open up. So this beer, really, you can only buy it in the supermarkets yep. um, or in a famous Trink. Halle, yeah. which is just a massive store that they sell drinks in. Um, no, that would be um, a um, Getränkemarkt. Trinkhalle is another word for kiosk, actually. Ah, a Getränkemarkt or a Trinkhalle. And as you see, it's a mixture really of Alt and... Now place it in the middle. Oh, wait, oh. first I want to sip. Oh, okay, Cheers. post, yeah. Um, and thank you, uh, because uh, actually we actually stopped by their office to get a, spe a special Költ glass. And a glass, gave yeah, it to us, so. because the glass is not for sale. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Költ, for the glass. Mm, nice. Do you want to try it too? Sure. Oh, so good. If you're ever in this region, I mean, it, it, it's a taste thing, right? Beer, I think it's a very... And um, here you have it. Isn't that beautiful? The yeah, trilogy nice. of uh, Alt, Költ and the and best Kölsch. beer, Kölsch. So anyway, so here you have the array of beers in Germany. We really hope that you... Um, have learned something. Yeah. And had some fun. I mean, we had some fun. We had some fun. Definitely. And we've got some cleaning up here to do. Yes, we have to actually finish the beer, unfortunately. <laughs> but we'll do this off camera. But if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button. Liking this video will help spread the word about Simple Germany. And hopefully other foreigners or Germans, if you're German, will watch this video and have some fun as well. Um, also hit that subscribe button and notification bell. I'll, I'll okay, let's take the Helles here. I'll drink I was going to say, let's go here like for the big ones. Okay. You know. So in that sense, we hope to see you next time. Cheers! Cheers!